Donald Trump was talking a really big game on Twitter once he saw protests across the country erupt. But once he started to see those protests grow in size in front of his own lawn, well then, it was a different story. He said, when the looting starts, the shooting starts. But then when he saw protesters in D.C. grow in numbers, well, behind the scenes, what did he do? He wasn't talking so tough. We now know that he retreated to an underground bunker after he threatened protesters on Twitter. So he's all talk, but he's not so tough when he's actually confronted with the reality of injustice in America. Now, if he were actually a leader and wasn't a scared, pathetic coward, he would engage with the protesters, speak with them, try to understand why they're feeling pain, why they're protesting, and in some instances, rioting and looting. But he's a coward and he doesn't know how to lead. He doesn't know how to govern. All he knows is talk, which is why he talks a big game until shit gets real. Then he's running and hiding like the little bitch that he is. And after he emerged from his underground bunker, he had peaceful protesters in D.C. tear gassed in order to make way for this now infamous photo op in front of St. John's Church, which was made into a political ad. And as Andrew Springer points out, me and my friends were tear gassed to make this ad happen. And if you're wondering who ordered that assault on peaceful protesters, it was Attorney General William Barr, who, let me remind you, is supposed to protect the constitutional rights of American citizens, including the First Amendment, freedom of speech. So he just brazenly violated the First Amendment, his duty to protect the Constitution, also Donald Trump could get a photo op. But let's be clear here about something. The reason why William Barr did that for Donald Trump, the reason why Donald Trump talks so frequently about dominating the protesters is because he's terrified. He is terrified. The last thing that any leader around the world, it doesn't matter what country we're talking about, wants to see is uprising in their country. And especially if you are a dimwit with no previous experience governing and you don't know what to do, how to handle it, you're terrified because you don't know how to quell the protests. So the only thing that Donald Trump does is he gravitates towards his authoritarian instincts and he tries to get someone to crush these protesters for him. Now, in a leaked call with governors, we found out exactly how he feels, you know, the depths of his authoritarian instincts. And he definitely wants them to crush these protests because it's it's scaring him. It should scare any leader. Take a look, and then we'll analyze what he said when we come back. What happened in the state of Minnesota, they were uh, electric stuff all over the world. They took over the police department. The police were running down the street, sirens blazing, the rest of them running. It was on camera. And then they wiped out. You probably have to build a new one, but I've never seen anything like it. And, and the whole world was laughing. Two days, three days later, I spoke to the governor. The governor is, I think, by the call, and he's the next one guy. And all of a sudden, and I said, you got to use the National Guard to take numbers. They did it first, and they did. And I'll tell you that, I don't know what it was. It was governor. It was the third night, fourth night. Those guys walked through that stuff like it was butter. They walked right through. And you haven't had any problems since. I mean, they don't. They're not going to go there. Now they'll go to some other place. But once you called out and you dominated, you took the worst place and you made it. They didn't even cover it last night because there was so little action. Because you dominated. You dominated. But, Tim, it showed the incredible difference between your great state yesterday and the day before compared to the first few days, which was just so absolutely. Nope. Absolutely. A police force and... And I don't blame you, I blame the mayor. I mean, I've never seen anything like it, where the police were told to abandon the police house and it was ransacked and, and really destroyed. And, you know, millions and millions of dollars are going to have to go back to fix it. I don't know. You'll have to go to the pump and you have to have to pay. still on the one thing I'd say, I spent 24 years in the guard. The one thing I would say that you can do is a lot of people don't understand what a national guard is. And you need to get out there from a PR perspective to make sure that it's not seen as an occupying force. But if they're neighbors, school teachers, business owners, those types of things, that's a really effective thing. Okay, good. I think that's a good idea. I must tell you, uh, it does so bad a few nights ago that 
the people wouldn't have minded an occupying force. I wish we had an occupying force in there. But for some reason, I don't know what it is, governors don't like calling up a lot of guards. We have thousands and thousands of people waiting to be called up. Is that a correct statement, General? We have 350,000 people, and, and they call up 200. Gee, I just don't understand why governors might take issue with the United States military crushing protests across the country. And what we just heard should terrify everyone. I need you to understand that I am not being hyperbolic when I say that we are watching democracy slip away from us. And it's been happening gradually over the course of decades. But now, that decline into authoritarianism, that descent into a police state has accelerated rapidly because of Donald Trump. Think about what he said here. When a governor talked about the need to get ahead with regard to PR, so that way, you know, the National Guard isn't seen as some sort of occupying force, Donald Trump responded by saying, it got so bad, I don't think the people would have minded an occupying force. I wish we had an occupying force there. This is the President of the United States talking about an occupying force on American soil. Does that sound like he respects the Constitution? Does that sound like he respects the right of American citizens to assemble and voice their grievances with the U.S. government? He is an authoritarian. He wants to be a dictator. And since, you know, trying to figure out how to appease the protesters isn't even an option for him because he's clueless, he just resorts to authoritarianism. But he wants everyone else to do the dirty work for him. He wants governors to do it. He wants the National Guard to do it. And now he wants to use the military, potentially, against its own people. This is so dangerous. And when we look back at this point in time, if we're able to survive this moment and not devolve into full-on authoritarianism... I think we're going to realize what a close call this was, but we don't necessarily know because the future hasn't been written yet. This could lead to authoritarianism. And the sad part is that a lot of people want that to happen because when you look at this poll, a lot of people are okay with the U.S. military quote-unquote supplementing police forces. So this is how democracy dies, with thunderous applause. And think about the way that he talked about these protests. He kept using the word dominate. He says, The National Guard walked through the crowds of protesters in Minneapolis like it was butter. This is violence. The United States government has officially become tyrannical. And I was told that conservatives are the ones who are watching out to make sure that our government doesn't become tyrannical. But they're the ones doing the most bootlicking as our government becomes explicitly and openly hostile towards its own citizens. You have Republican lawmakers like Matt Gates talking about hunting down American citizens. This is outright chaos. Trump is fanning the flames. And you see, you know, a sort of tepid response from congressional Republicans trying to rein him in. But I mean, they're too afraid to challenge him because of, you know, how that might affect them politically. And Democrats, I don't know what they're doing. You see Nancy Pelosi posing for a photo op, urging him to try to, you know, uh, heal the country. There's just, he's unrestrained. This is why we have to worry about Donald Trump becoming a dictator, right? Or paving the way for a future dictator who's more calculating and smart and strategic, right? Because there's no check on his tyranny. There's no check. He stacked the federal judiciary, so he has the courts on his side. Republicans are too afraid to fight him, as are Democrats. So we're dealing with a situation where we are sliding into authoritarianism. The U.S. government is being openly hostile towards its citizens. The president is instigating violence, threatening violence against citizens, literally threatening to use the United States military against its own people. And we're just going on about our business as if this is completely normal when it's not normal. So pay attention, because we are losing democracy before our very eyes.
tremendous, 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 tremendous,